Ever write an SQL join and end up with 10 times more rows than you expect? You're not alone, and the good news is it's usually easy to fix. I'm Ben from Database Star, and in this video, I'll show you the four most common join mistakes, how to spot them fast, and how to fix them. So your queries return exactly what you expect every time. By the end, you'll understand what's really happening behind your joins and feel confident writing them. And if you want to go deeper, check out my joins mastery course. The link is in the description. The first mistake is forgetting to include the join condition. Here's an example. This query doesn't specify how the two tables should be joined. It says, get all rows from customer and invoice tables. If you run this, it will return a Cartesian product. This means every customer combined with every invoice. If you have 100 customers and 300 invoices, you'll get 30,000 rows back. That's a lot more than you probably expect. Here's the correct version. We want to select from both tables, specify the join or inner join keyword, and the columns to join on. We run this and see the results. Now each customer is only joined to the invoice they belong to. Always include a clear on clause that links the tables using matching key columns like foreign keys. The second mistake is using the wrong type of join. A common one is writing a left join, but then adding a WHERE condition that removes the nulls, which turns it into an inner join. Here is an example. We select some columns from the customer table and the invoice table. We use a left join, so we see customer records that don't have an invoice. But we add the WHERE clause to only include rows where the invoice ID is not null. This query looks like a left join, but because of the WHERE clause, any customers without an invoice are excluded. If you actually want to include all customers, even those without invoices, remove the WHERE clause. Here is the corrected version. This way, the join keeps customers with no matching invoices. Another mistake happens when you join on columns that aren't unique. Here is an example. I've assumed that the invoice table has columns for customer first name and last name, which aren't actually there, but it's just to prove this point. If multiple customers share the same name, each invoice could match more than one customer, creating duplicate rows in your result. The fix is to join on unique keys instead. This is usually an ID column, and it's how we've been doing our joins so far. Now each invoice matches exactly one customer. This example was a little different because the columns didn't exist and we already had an ID field. But sometimes the tables are not as well defined and you might have to join on different columns. Always check that the columns you're joining on uniquely identify rows in at least one of the tables. The fourth mistake is not using aliases when your tables have columns with the same names. Here's an example. Let's say we want to see track details and their genre details because each track has a genre. We write a query to get the ID and name of both the track and the genre. Your editor might show you an error or a warning here before you run the query. Let's run the query. We do that and we see an error about an ambiguous column. Here, SQL doesn't know which name you mean, the one from the track table or the one from the genre table. We also have the same problem with the genre ID as the column is in both tables. Now, the genre ID values themselves should be the same as it's being used to join. But that doesn't matter. It's the name of the column that causes the issue. This can cause errors or confusing results. To fix this, we have to do something called qualify the column. This means we need to say which table each of these ambiguous columns comes from. One way to do this is to add the full table name, like this. We could just add it to the ambiguous columns to solve the issue. We do this and run the query, which shows a result. It's usually better to qualify all of the columns, so it's clear where each column comes from. So we can add the table name to the track ID column. We run this and the query still works. Another way to improve our query is to use table aliases. These are shorter names you can give to your tables within your query, and use these aliases instead of table names. It can make your query easier to read and easier to write. To do this, we add a short name, which is usually one or a few letters, after the table name in the from clause. Then, whenever we refer to this table, we use the alias instead. We run this query and it shows the same result. Using table aliases makes your queries easier to read and avoids ambiguity. It's a small habit that prevents a lot of mistakes. If you want to go beyond the basics and really understand how joins work, enroll in my Joins Mastery course. 
It covers inner, outer and many other join types in depth, how to overcome problems with joins and much more. You'll find the link in the description below. So now you know the most common join mistakes and how to fix them. Fixing these will make your SQL more reliable and your results easier to trust. One of the best things you can do to get better with SQL is to practice. But there are several mistakes that I see people making with their practice as well. You'll want to watch this video next where I show you what those mistakes are and how to correct them. Thanks for watching.